In this installment, we're going to be going over week nine and best bets. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy, Chef D, and I'm here to give you the winning ingredients for your week nine best bets. I'm going to go through each and every game, giving you my top plays, um, either if it's going to be money line spread or total. All right. But before I deep dive into the week nine games, guys, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to the channel. Make sure you are following me on Instagram and Twitter. Message D. Don't forget about the TikTok at Chef underscore D 91. And don't forget about the Patreon. All of those links are going to be down below. Remember, the Patreon is for if you want more DFS betting and fantasy football advice. All right, so we're going to kick off week nine with a, a highly touted team in Minnesota Vikings. But a lot of teams, a lot of people in the public think that this could be a fake team, a fraud, because this is a 6-1 and one Minnesota Vikings team going up against the Washington Commanders. Uh, now, we have the Washington Commanders as road uh as home dogs so that provides some value there uh coming in on the commanders this is a very feisty team they do not go away especially with taylor heineke at the helm at quarterback yes he has a problem with uh turnovers but he is someone that is going to fight and scrape and claw at each and every opportunity a lot of people were on the Arizona Cardinals last week thinking that they were going to be able to get off the get off the schneid. They had a great performance on Thursday night football and then hopefully that they would bounce back and uh, put two wins together going up against a Minnesota team that was five and one at that time. Um, on the other look of the end is Washington Commanders coming off a struggle at the beginning of the season with uh, the three straight losses. Let's see. Before they hit a skid of four straight losses after week one and then uh, finished strong the last past three weeks with a big win over the Indianapolis Colts and solid wins against the Green Bay Packers and the Chicago Bears. So this is a perfect storm here. We got uh, what could be a fraud in the Minnesota Vikings going against the commanders who are very feisty. And with, like I said, Taylor Heineke, he's not going down without a fight. Now, in these scenarios, I like to lean towards the home dog, especially when we're looking at uh, a team that has been playing red hot, coming home, and they are they're getting looked down upon. So in this particular game between the Vikings and the commanders, Give me the plus three in this situation. We have a home team here in the commanders that I think they're going to keep it close. And uh, Taylor Heineke, I believe in him that he's going to, um, at, at any moment, can definitely fight towards covering the spread. If I'm looking towards the total, I'm leaning more towards the over in this game. I think there's going to be points. Uh, uh, plenty in this game. We're talking about a high octane offense in the Minnesota Vikings going up against a poor secondary in the Commanders. And on the other side, the Vikings secondary is not good. All right, it's not good. Vikings do not have much of a pass rush, and they should get exposed today, uh, exposed on Sunday, especially with Curtis Samuel, Antonio Gibson. Those type of guys are gonna be definitely be able to exploit the weaknesses of the Minnesota Vikings defense. And for the money line. That one's going to be a flip of the coin. It's worthy to take that money line of plus 140 on uh, on a road, on a home dog here in the Washington Commanders. I want to stay away from that one. I'm leaning more towards the over. I think there's going to be points of plenty. And I like the plus three in this game. Let's move on to the next. Next game we got going on will be the Miami Dolphins going up against the Chicago Bears. This one is another juicy effort this there's a couple games already it's going to be really really tricky like we saw a lot of people are going to be on that minnesota team and you got a tough team in the commanders and now you got this game here miami dolphins two was back and now you're going against the chicago bears coming off a huge win against the new england patriots where we saw justin fields look like an actual competent quarterback they're finally using his legs I'm liking what I'm seeing out of Luke Getz's offense here. We got a Miami Dolphins team on back-to-back -back wins. Um, things got a little bit corrected after that New England Patriots game when they got mopped up by the Dallas Cowboys. So they're home in this matchup going up against a Miami Dolphins team defense that's going to have Bradley Chubb 
will that be much of a factor to towards Justin Fields who really doesn't throw the ball that much they're gonna run the ball down the throat of the Miami Dolphins let's make sure and look at uh, the fantasy points allowed to running backs that's gonna be a key factor of uh, the Miami Dolphins run defense going up against the Chicago Bears so if we're looking at that really quick um, we're going to flip that around. Let's see how bad Miami Dolphins run defense. Miami Dolphins is 24th overall and 28th in the red zone, right? Positive note is that they're allowing only 71 yards and 3.8 yards of carry. But in the red zone, they are probably in long, long drives. They're giving up runs in that end zone. Um, so that can be a positive note for Chicago Bears. Chicago Bears are another home dog. And I like home dogs. Um... We're going to go with the Chicago Bears with the plus four in this game environment. The over under is going to be a coin toss. It's going to be a coin toss. I'm going to lean towards um, the under in this game. I think the Bears No, You know what? The loss of Robert Quinn and the loss of Roquan Smith are going to be factors to this defense, this young defense. Give me the over in this game with Miami's Dolphins. Us um, wideouts, I think. That they're gonna force Justin Fields to throw the ball, get connections with Darnell Mooney and newly acquired Chase Claypool. And I like the win of the Miami Dolphins in this game. All right. Next game, we have the Buffalo Bills going up against the New York Jets in division matchup, AFC East matchup. Highly anticipated. We got Josh Allen, Red Hot Buffalo Bills, and then the Jets. Zach Wilson is in a spot where he needs to prove himself in the Jets as well to keep those hopes of the playoffs very, very alive as the Jets are 5-3 and three right now. So my favorite play in this particular game is going to be that plus 11.5. It was plus, plus 13. That has been hit all the way down to 11.5. I want to grab it before it gets to 10 or 9.5. It might get that far down once we get to kickoff. So... This is a Jets team that's very familiar with Josh Allen. Uh, Josh Allen still has tendencies to turn the ball over, and the Jets have a top five, top ten defense in the league. Excuse me. Um, and if I'm leaning to any other thing that we're going to look at, when you got a a a a over double digit spread here, it's either the the dominant team is going to you know pull away, and the the lesser team is going to struggle to score points, or the the lesser team at home is going to play tough and play solid defense is going to be a slow, uh, a lower scoring affair. So I would go to the plus 11 and a half or the under in the 46 for this Jets and Bills in division matchup. That's another key factor for the over under in division here. They know each other. We, we've seen them twice every single year. Uh, that, that lends to more of the under. If we're talking about a total that's almost near 50, I like the under of 46 as well. Next game, we have the Carolina Panthers. And P.J. Walker, you know, restarting his whole career in the NFL now after being an MVP in another league. Cincinnati Bengals struggling after that horrible, horrible Halloween game. Um, the best the best option here, I think, is going to be this plus seven and a half on the Carolina Panthers side. I do not think that the Bengals are that bad. And obviously, I do not I do not think they are that bad for them to come out with another poor performance offensively. Yes, they should put up some solid points, but I don't think that the Carolina Panthers are bad as well. I think they're going to compete. P.J. Walker, um, their emergence to Dante Former, especially that running game, is going to expose that Cincinnati Bengals defense. We saw what Chubb did against the Bengals. Dante Foreman is another hammer type of running back. He's had back-to-back -back games of over 100 rushing yards and TDs. So, I'm leaning on the Panthers to keep this game close, especially if they give me seven points and a hook. Give me the plus seven and a half in this game between the Panthers and the Cincinnati Bengals. The run game on the Panther side will run wild. All right. Next game, we got the Green Bay Packers going up against the Detroit Lions. Now, this is a spot where the Packers need to prove themselves, need to force um, to really enforce themselves in this division of the NFC North, all right? There's been a lot of struggles, a lot of up and downs for the Green Bay Packers. Had a bad loss. Not bad. It was They kept it kind of close, but it was decisive against the Buffalo Bills. I think they're going to exercise some demons here in this game against the Detroit Lions who cannot stop a cough. 
They can't stop a sneeze. They can't stop anything. All right. We got question marks on DeAndre Swift. Jared Goff is going to be in plenty of situations where he might be able to turn the ball over against this top 10 secondary in the Green Bay Packers. Give me the Packers at the minus three and a half on the road. And I like them as the money line as well if you want to go with a little more safer option. All right. Next game, we got the Los Angeles Chargers going up against the Atlanta Falcons. Now, this team has come out of nowhere. Right now, they are in the lead uh, in this division of the NFC South. But the question is, can they pass the ball? And they're going to need to if they're going up against a high upstart L.A. Chargers team. This L.A. Chargers team needs to bounce back. This is a perfect spot. Coming off a bye, I think they're going to exercise some demons as well. Get Justin Herbert right. Understand that there's no Keenan Allen and no Mike Williams, but they still got guys in Josh Palmer and Austin Eckler and Gerald Everett, uh, DeAndre Carter. Those guys are going to step up for the LA Chargers. They're going to put up some points. So I like this across the board. I like the minus three. I like the, excuse me, I like the minus three. I like the over in 50 points uh, at 49 and a half. I think the Chargers are going to put up a ton of points. Uh, Falcons can put up some points as well. We got Marcus Mariota able to move in the pocket. And I think the LA Chargers money line is pretty safe for this week. All right. Next game will be the Indianapolis Colts going up against the New England Patriots here. This is going to be an ugly contest here. I don't believe that the Patriots can cover the six, especially that Matt Jones game. He was lucky that they did not count that pick six. That would have been a totally different environment for the New England Patriots. They would have been coming off a loss. The Jets would have been up 17 to three in that game, and it would have definitely dampered things right before halftime. Would have been a whole different atmosphere in that game. I think this is too many points against the Colts. Colts have a very good defense. Sam Ellinger, yes, um, this is a rookie, uh, a young rookie quarterback. You know how Bill Belichick, Bill Belichick takes advantages of young quarterbacks. So in this particular game, we're going to go with the under. I don't think many points are going to be scored. I think this can be a field goal fest in this game between the Colts and the Patriots. Like kickers in this game, I like the under and 40 and a half. And if I had to choose, if I had to choose after thinking about, I think the Patriots definitely win. I do not feel comfortable of taking six points. I think the Patriots definitely win, but I do not feel comfortable taking the six points in this particular game. All right, let's continue to go down. Still at the one o'clock time, we got the Las Vegas Raiders going against the Jacksonville Jaguars. That was a that was one of the worst performances I ever seen. Um, period. Uh, the Raiders did not show up against the New Orleans Saints. Jacksonville Jaguars had a lead and then lost it yet again. This is a very young team. They're going to continue to make mistakes, and that gives the Las Vegas Raiders life, all right? They, the Las Vegas Raiders had a ton of guys with the flu last week. They didn't go through um, none of the game script that they usually do before Sunday. So a lot of the wide receivers out. A lot of the offense was out. That's why they look so poor. They look sick. On Sunday, so I think they bounce back. Give me the Raiders on the money line. A lot of people are going to be scared to go to that number, uh, but I feel fine going back to the Raiders, getting things right with Devonta Adams, with Josh Jacobs. Get back to that running game, and it should be a very ugly sight for the Jacksonville Jaguars in this game. Let's move on to the four o'clock slate. We have the Seattle Seahawks going up against the Arizona Cardinals, uh, AFC uh, NFC West matchup that we got. Right here, a lot of people are going to sour on the Arizona Cardinals in this game, and everyone's going to be on the Seahawks because they look so great. They just beat the Giants. I think this is a spot where the Arizona Cardinals are going to put up some points and definitely scrap with the other birds here in the Seattle Seahawks. Yes, Geno Smith has been outstanding. They got a great run game with Kenneth Walker, uh, but I think Arizona Cardinals are going to squeak one out. All right, this is going to be a very back and forth close game in the fourth quarter. Arizona Cardinals came up short against the Minnesota Vikings. They weren't able to get a stop to get the ball back. I think the Cardinals are going to be able to get a stop in this game. They have a sneaky, very sneaky defense that creates turnovers. Isaiah Simmons is a matchup nightmare. I like how he's uh, really incoming, uh, becoming something very, very special on that defensive side of the ball. Um, 
Kyle Murray is coming through. We'll see about James Conner, but if not, they do have Eno Benjamin as well, who's an explosive running back. Keontae Ingram as well. Give me the Arizona Cardinals money line in this game, and I like the over on this in particular matchup, all right? Yes, Seattle Seahawks defense has been improving, but with DeAndre Hopkins and Kyle Murray getting things back on track, don't forget about Zach Ertz. I think there's going to be a nice back and forth affair here in Arizona, all right? Next game, we have the Los Angeles Rams going up against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Buccaneers are super, super hampered. But on the other side, we have the LA Rams that are not really getting things clicking as well. We have a hampered Cooper Cup. We don't know how 100% he is. This line is pretty, pretty solid here. They got the over and under at 42 and a half, which is pretty fair. Both of these teams are struggling to score points. Uh, this, is, this could be an ugly side here. I think Tom Brady gets things right. I like the weapons more on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers side. Uh, LA Rams defense still is injured in that secondary, despite the fact that they do have Jalen Ramsey. That's a bump up. That could be a question towards Mike Evans, but they still have Chris Godwin, who is a big, big X factor. It can exploit the LA Rams defense on the other side. Um, Tempe, it sucks that they are losing Shaq Barrett, but they still got guys back there that will create havoc going up against Matt Stafford. And, he, and this LA Rams team has looked absolutely, absolutely putrid. So, giving a money line on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in this game. Right, and then last but not least, we have the Kansas City Chiefs uh, going against the Tennessee Titans. This is the last game on Sunday before we get to that Monday night football game. Uh, Tennessee Titans with Malik Willis. This is, this is just... I, I, there's no way. There's no way. Give me an absolute cover on the Kansas City Chiefs side. They got a new toy in Kadarius Tony. That could be uh, bombs away on that side. There's going to be a field day for Travis Kelsey, a field day for Juju Smith-Schuster. I don't know which running back is going to go off between Jerk McKinnon, Isaiah Pacheco, and Clyde Edwards-Dallaire, but it doesn't matter because this is going to be a foot stomping for the Kansas City Chiefs. Give me them to cover the minus 12 and a half. If I had to choose an over and under, I would choose the under in this game. There's no way that the Tennessee Titans can compete and put up uh, points in this game, all right? All right, to make that 45 and a half go over, unless the Chiefs just put up 50 points, which you never know. It could happen. I think Tennessee is going to struggle to score points. Chiefs can easily put up 30 with no question. The question is, can the Tennessee Titans push it towards the over? I say not. This is going to be a blowout where it's going to be like, you can look at the score and be like 33 to 7. That's 40 points. That clearly could be the game. It could be Tennessee Titans 10. And it could be Kansas City Chiefs, 30. A nice 20-point blowout, 40 points, the under still hits. That's the type of game I'm seeing in this inter in particular environment, all right? And then last but not least, we got the Monday night football game here with the Baltimore Ravens and going up against the New Orleans Saints, all right? Now, the Saints were gifted, gifted, or when they took advantage of a team that was not healthy. Yes, they are in the Superdome, but I I agree with this spread where you got another home dog here. Okay, Baltimore Ravens are playing better. I think they learned from the beginning problems of the season where they cannot keep a lead, and now things are changing back over. They learned their lesson. I think they're going to be able to keep a lead. I think they're going to hold off the New Orleans Saints, even though they're going to be able to put up points. Watch out for Chris Olave. Watch out for Alvin Kamara. But... Lamar Jackson alone with the myriad of running game that they have, Isaiah Likely. They got a whole bunch of nobodies, but they still put up points, okay? So give me the Baltimore Ravens on the money line in this game. I'm not quite sure about that over-under at 47 and a half. That one is is right at the at the correct number there. Thinking about 46, around 47, around that range. But I want the safer bet. Give me the Baltimore Ravens in this game, all right? Now. If I had to choose the lock of the night, let's clear this all out. We're going with guarantees. We're going to clear all this out. For the whole week nine slate, my main guarantee of the whole entire week. Let's see if we get the best. Now, we're going to take a spread. We're going to take a spread so we can get a minus 110, minus 105 type of look. Uh, if I'm choosing one game in particular out of all of them, you know what? I think I'm a little bullish. Give me the L.A. Chargers. Give me the L.A. Chargers to show up in this game against the Atlanta Falcons. This is going to be the lock of week nine. We're going with 
minus three. Guys, let me know in the comment section down below. What is your lock of week nine? Definitely put that down below in the comment section. We can do it. Maybe we'll do a contest. That's going to grow from there. Uh, I just want to see, get the conversation going down below in this comment section of the video, all right? That's going to be my lock, all right? Thank you guys for tuning in. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. If you guys want my definite picks for Sunday, you got to sign up for the Patreon. Remember, that link is down below as well. So thank you guys for tuning in. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll be back with another video very, very soon, all right? Peace out, guys.